<laughs> if only I could have it that easy. No, I decided to set through the whole game. Start to finish. God knows why I would fucking do that. Now, I haven't played every single Sonic game there is. I've played most of them. i played all the good ones, anyway. Uh, there's a lot of the newer 3D ones that I really didn't feel like playing. But I did play all the classic ones. And I did, I did play Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which is one of my favorites. I like Sonic. He's, he's cool. It's a cool game. It all started with Sonic the Hedgehog. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I think the game is pretty goddamn dated. You can't even spin dash. Also, it has the worst fucking Sonic stage in history. Goddamn Labyrinth Zone. But, it is a classic, and I can definitely see why. At the time, this shit would have been the tits. And then, of course, there was Sonic the Hedgehog 2 which pretty much cemented his mascot of Sega status. The game is, uh, quite frankly, I think it's a masterpiece. You got Spin Dash, which you didn't have in the first game. There's no annoying ass levels like there is in the first game. It's just an easy to play and very fun game. It's not my favorite Sonic game, but I could definitely understand if it's, if it's your favorite. And then of course there's Sonic the Hedgehog 3, which is just a fucking magnificent game. It even has a save feature, which is definitely something that I enjoy. It looks gorgeous, the music is fucking awesome. It's a it's just an upgrade to Sonic 2, basically. The only problem I have is that it's very short. At at the time, it was the shortest Sonic game. There's only six levels. But the reason for that is Sonic and Knuckles, which was released after Sonic 3, was supposed to be one giant game that was basically combined with Sonic 3. But due to, I don't know, limitations or time constraints or something, they had to release them as two separate games. And on the Sega Genesis, the cartridge for Sonic and Knuckles actually has a feature where it can plug in with Sonic 3 and basically make the perfect Sonic game. It was bit, it would be massive and have a save feature. But separately, they're kind of just lesser. They're still great games, but they would definitely be my favorite game if they were just released as one solid game. Sonic 3D Blast, to my knowledge, is the first 3D Sonic game. I don't know if that's right or not, but I'm just going to stick with it. It's not a bad game. It can be a pain in the ass to control sometimes, but I actually really enjoyed the game, and for the time it came out, it looked pretty goddamn good. Sonic Spinball is not even really a, a true Sonic game. It's, it's mostly just Sega riding their mascot to town. That being said, it's actually a pretty fun game. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is an awesome 3D Sonic game. While not perfect, it's definitely kinda clunky, and the story is just fucking ridiculous. The dialogue is pretty stupid, but goddamn if it's not charming, and it's fun as hell, for the most part. Sonic Adventure... I, I don't know about this one. I mean, I'm sure it has its fans, but... I'm not gonna play this. There's there's no way. Sonic Heroes had a pretty creative idea, actually. I, I mean, I've never personally played it, and I don't plan on playing it just for the sake of this video. Mainly for certain reasons. <laughs> Me, Big the Cat. <laughs> After striking out too many damn times with a bunch of mediocre or terrible 3D Sonic games, they finally got their shit together 
and made Sonic Mania, which is debatably the best Sonic game around. I know that everybody seems to like Studiopolis Zone the most, but I'm more of a pressed garden man. Back at the task at hand, these games aren't the reason that we're all here today. No, the reason we're here is because one of those Sonic 3D games that I mentioned weren't very good, well, the most, probably the most infamous one of them all is dubbed as just Sonic 06 because the game's name is just Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know why the fuck way they would call it that. It doesn't deserve that title. It, it should just be called Sonic Oh Shit, but I'll refer to it for the rest of this video as Sonic 06, mainly because it was released in 2006 for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And everybody was excited for it because it was going to be the first Sonic game on the new consoles, the new generation back on Xbox 360 and PS3. It was going to be so great. And oh, oh god, it was, it was fucking foul. Oh. My God. This game is broken beyond belief. I don't know how they could release something like this. Okay, so... The graphics aren't anything special. They're not bad. I mean, the, the fucking character models look... Horrendous. Except for the main characters. Pretty much all these NPC characters in this stupid fucking town look god fucking awful. Sonic's alright, I guess. His run animation's kinda weird. Good fucking lord! Who the shit is that? This game is fucking horrible. It's just fucking ass. There's glitches everywhere. I don't even know what else to say. This is like the hub, I guess, and you just run around this fucking town, not knowing what the hell to do, talking to these creepy fucking people. Then they, they some of them will tell you where you need to go, <laughs> but you, the map never shows exactly where you're supposed to go. There shouldn't be a goddamn map in a Sonic game. Sonic games are supposed to be linear platformers. What the fuck am I doing in this stupid, godless town, talking to these creepy fucking mannequin looking people. Look at this guy. This guy looks like a bigger fucking nerd than me. Oh boy, there's Tails. Now loading. I tell you one thing, you will see now loading more than you will actually play the fucking game. Every five minutes there's a goddamn loading screen. The dialogue is, is nothing special. It's a Sonic game. Dialogue is always super goddamn cringy. I'll get on with the story later on. Now I want to cover the gameplay. And my god, it's fucked. It's fucked beyond belief. Probably the jankiest, hardest to control, most backwards assed, broken, fucking gameplay I've ever seen in a Sonic game. Before you can enter the first stage, you have to do some bullshit where you jump through rings in the stupid town so you can get some new shoes that'll let you have an ability that lets you reach the first stage. Uh, who gives a shit? Why am I doing this? Why am I jumping through these fucking rings in this stupid town? Look at, look at your control in air. Look at that. That is horrible. One tap of the stick anywhere will send Sonic flying in that direction. It's the absolute worst control I have ever played in a video game. So, after you do that, you get another one of these trademarked now loading screens. Gotta love that shit. Then this fucking lunatic will... What the fuck is this guy doing? Well, he gives you these shoes that I guess let you, like, dash along rings... It's a useless ability, honestly. It's only used to reach the first area. Man, today's D. Day. Fuck you, Sonic. You blue fuck. 
So after all that bullshit, you finally reach the first stage. Wave Ocean. What a great name. I hope one of the stages later is called, like, Blazing Volcano or something. That's about how stupid that is. Well, it's here that you finally see just how shit the control really is. Ugh. Just... Sonic is just the hardest thing. I feel like I'm driving him more than I'm actually trying to just move the son of a bitch. He does have an, some attacks that he can do, and it's nice how he can, like, have a homing attack. That's all well and good, but... What the fuck happened here? Look at this. What, has he got glue on his shoes? Whatever. At least I didn't fucking die there. You gotta do some... A bunch of shit. They just throw a bunch of shit at you and expect you to understand how to play. This is the first stage. All I've done so far in this game is jump through a bunch of goddamn rings. Now I'm jumping on these fucking walls? How is Sonic able to do this? Never before has he ever done anything like this, even in the 3D games. Now all of a sudden he can, like, stick to walls and jump alarmingly fast. Like, what the fuck am I playing right now? This is horrendous. And somehow he can surf, but if you jump in the water, you just die instantly. Oh, but Sonic can just slide across the water somehow. Fuck this game. Seriously. And every time you run really fast and run into a wall, Sonic will just land flat on his blue ass. That's real great. So halfway through the level, Sonic will jump on this big-ass whale, and for some reason, he wants Tails to do something to close the gate so the whale doesn't get out. I don't know why it doesn't have anything to do with the story, but Control switches over to Tails, and I'll say one of the only positives I have about this game is that there's actually quite a lot of player playable characters in this game. That doesn't mean they all control well. Tails controls somehow worse than Sonic. Like, he is fucking terrible to fucking control. While he's in air, it's the same principle as when Sonic jumps in the in the sky and, and falls. While you're moving the stick, he goes so goddamn fast that it, he feels like a bar of soap just sliding across a wet surface. It's so hard to hit your mark while you're flying in air and he can barely fly for any time at all before he gets tired. And guess how he attacks? He has something called the Dummy Ring Bomb, where he throws a crate of fake rings that explode on his enemies. I have no fucking comment to that. Oh my god, what is happening? Oh, I guess I'm dead. Great. Oh my god, now I have to fucking go all the way back and replay his tails after I get on the fucking dolphin again. Oh, what the fuck happened there? Son of a bitch, I hate this game. So towards the end of the level comes the worst part about playing as Sonic. These stupid fucking parts where Sonic runs extremely fast are the worst thing imaginable. I, I wouldn't put this on my worst enemy. What happened there? What the fuck happened there? Just look at it. You just look at it and you know instantly it sucks shit. So, well, for one thing, if Sonic wasn't hard enough to control as it is, he's just impossible to control. You cannot control him. Just look. He just jumps... Look at him! He jumps head first! Holy shit! How does he do that? And then he just... Oh my god. Oh my god. If only Sonic would sh just slow the fuck down! He just runs into everything... Oh my god. Oh! Oh! And every time you die, you have to restart the whole cycle of running again. So you have to somehow master this game's shat controls in an instant. Otherwise, if you if you lose five lives, thank God it never happened to me, but I, I have seen it happen before. 
if you lose all your lives and get a and get a game over on the first level, you go all the way back to the very start of the game. This game just can just eat shit. As I said earlier, you play as more than just Sonic. Like, you play as Sonic and Tails, obviously. But then you get this new character named Silver, who's a, a silver hedgehog. Who would have guessed that? And he is fucking awful to control as well. Probably even worse than Sonic. I, actually, I think he's the worst fucking character in the entire game. Well, for one thing, he's annoying as it is. But that's more to do with his backstory than anything. Just the way he, he fights enemies. You have to use his telekinesis ability to pick up objects and throw them at enemies. That sounds easy enough, but it's not. Also, he can float for a short time, which is cool, except for when it's not. I don't know, Silver just sucks. There was one mission where I was playing as Silver where you have, at the end of it, you have to knock this ball into a hole at the end of it to get a door to open. And you can only use your telekinesis powers nine times on the ball to get it to move before the ball breaks and you have to restart. I, I feel no shame in saying that it took me over 45 fucking minutes to beat this level. I was so close to just taking the game out and breaking it over my goddamn knee. But I powered on. Another character that you play as while you're playing Silver's shitty storyline is Blaze the Cat and she's probably the easiest fucking character to play as in this entire game. Mainly because, just like Sonic, she has a homing attack. And she also has another attack where she, like, makes fire and, like, flips through the air like fucking Lord Sidious from Revenge of the Sith. I actually kind of fucking like it because at least she doesn't fucking fly all over the place like Sonic and all them. And she doesn't have to do some kind of platforming gimmick like Silver and his tele telepathy. She's easy to play as. The only problem is... You only play like two fucking missions as her. Every other fucking mission in Silver's storyline is playing as shitty ass Silver himself who sucks shit. Also during Sonic's Path you have to play as Knuckles in a few parts which you would think that him having spiky Knuckles being able to glide through air and breeze through levels would be easy as hell, right? Well, it's not. For some reason, he... he his attacks are fucking useless. Like, he, he, you might as well not even attempt to attack. Just run through everything. Glide through the fucking stage. But the problem is, when he clings to walls, there's like some kind of glitch where you can't, like, jump properly. I don't know how to explain it. It just sucks ass. The third main storyline, you play a Shadow and... Ugh. He's easier to control than Sonic, mainly because he doesn't have those stupid-ass parts where he just runs like an idiot like Sonic does. Instead, he drives these fucking vehicles for some reason. Shad I don't mind playing as Shadow, though. The vehicles kind of suck, but those parts are not, they're not too often. It's Most of the time, it's just him platforming, you know, almost like a fucking actual Sonic game. Also during Shadow's storyline, you play as this big robot dude named Omega, whose origin story I have no fucking clue what it is. But he's pretty easy to play as. He's got these fucking rockets that he can shoot out and just kill the shit out of all the enemies around him. He can levitate, or well, use a rocket, I guess. But he's pretty easy to play as. Not too bad. Also during Shadow's story, you get to play as Rouge the Bat with big fucking titties. Well, same problems that apply to Knuckles apply to her. It, I just can't explain that whole thing while you're climbing, while you're clinging to something. It just sometimes won't let you jump at all, and you'll stay attached to the wall. I don't know how else to explain it. 
but she's pretty much just like Knuckles, except her attack is a little bit better because she has kind of something similar to Tell's dummy ring bomb. And uh, you also play as Amy for like a mission or two. Oh, God help me. God give me strength. Oh boy, the story. Now I know I ripped a, a new asshole into this game based off its gameplay, but the story. This has to be the dumbest fucking story in a Sonic game ever. I don't understand what the hell they were thinking. Like, what? The first Sonic game ever. So its story is basically, you're a hedgehog trying to save other animals from being turned into robots because this fat dude named Robotnik is crazy and he wants to take over the world. Sounds perfectly fine, right? Well, they don't really get any more extreme than that until it starts in with all the 3D bullshit. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle had a pretty complex story, and sure, it was pretty dumb in a few parts, and it was definitely convoluted, but it was nowhere near this shit. This is the first cutscene in the game. It looks really fucking good for it being from 2006. Like, all the cutscenes, the major cutscenes in this game, look really fucking impressive. But who the fuck is this? That's a fucking human being! Now, to my knowledge, there's only been, like, Robotnik. I, like, I assume he's a human. But who the fuck are all these people? Where the fuck does this take place? Why the fuck does this look like Final Fantasy? Why the fuck does this game have so many goddamn screen tears and shit? If you notice, you, you'll probably notice a few times in this video that there will be like static, like one of the, those little static lines. Yeah, that's not your, that's probably not your TV or anything that you're watching this on. It's, it's just this shitty fucking game, shit in the bed. But anyways, just look at this. This is not a Sonic game. This looks like a Final Fantasy game. And a shitty one at that. I don't know who the fuck any of these people are. I popped this fucker in expecting to see the, the blue motherfucker himself. And I expected just some simple fucking gameplay. Him going to beat the shit out of Robotnik. But instead you get all this bullshit about this fucking place that you have no idea where the fuck it is. You see this this lady? I don't know. I guess she's a fucking princess. And then Robotnik decides to show up. Why? Fuck if I know. What the hell could he possibly want with the princess? Your guess is as good as mine. Finally, Robotnik shows up. And I gotta say, he's looking pretty fly. He's slimmed up, and he... I like his design. I like his design for the... New HD gen. Anyways, he takes a, a big old exposition dump on the princess. Basically saying that she has a Chaos Emerald. And he wants it. And he also wants to kidnap her. God knows why. I don't fucking know. Then Sonic shows up and he's looking pretty good too. These characters look pretty good in these cutscenes. I gotta say, it's too bad this game is utter shit. Well... He does a pretty impressive job of dispatching of Robotnik's robots. Oh, sorry, Eggman. I forgot his fucking name's Eggman now. I like it. This cutscene is good. Sonic! Sonic the Hedgehog! I enjoy this cutscene. I can't believe I enjoy this shit. But, I gotta ask, why is Sonic... Saving a human princess. This is just... This is just beyond my comprehension. I can't understand it. Then Silver shows up and says something about some Iblis trigger. And I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Nobody does. Who gives a shit? There's that trademark now loading screen again. 
The princess gets kidnapped in one of these not so impressive cutscenes. After a while, Sonic finds the princess, but Eggman sends the Egg Cerberus after him, and you gotta fight it and destroy it. Which, the Egg Cerberus doesn't even look like Cerberus, it looks like something from Zoids. That's easy as fuck. Sonic rescues the princess, and shit gets extremely weird. Sonic tells her some cheesy bullshit that uh, about like her not being sad and that she should smile because that's all he needs. It's really that fucking cheesy. I wish I was making this shit up. Well, anyways, Eggman is after the princess because something called the Flames of Disaster because it has something to do with the god of the land, something called Solaris coming back and destroying the world. If you're confused, I don't fucking blame you. This is fucking ass. This is not a goddamn Sonic game. I don't care what anybody says. This is just asinine. I can't imagine what they were thinking. Seriously, maybe in I bet in the storyboard they're probably like, "Hey guys, let's make this Sonic game as confusing as fucking humanly possible." We're gonna be the next Square Enix. This is gonna be this is gonna be something to rival Final Fantasy. But no, this is a fucking joke. And you got this weird sexual tension between a goddamn cartoon hedgehog and a fucking realistic human female. I thought Sonic already had a girlfriend. It's fucking Amy, and she's a goddamn hedgehog. I think. So what the fucks up with this shit? Ugh. If you have time to worry, then run. That doesn't even make any sense. N but this fucking game doesn't make any sense either. I fucking hate this shit. I can't, I can't fathom why I am even attempting to explain it. Oh shit! Look out for Silver the Hedgehog! So, Silver's after Sonic because... Apparently, he thinks that Sonic is the Iblis Trigger. If you don't know who Iblis is, Iblis is the monster that apparently destroys the world and is turns it into the future that Silver is from, and Silver wants to prevent it. Ah, fucking, who cares? While these two jerk-offs are fighting, the princess ends up getting captured by fucking Robotnik again. In the span of, a, a, like, not even a mission, she gets captured again. Good lord. Well, on their way to go save the princess, Sonic Team ends up getting teleported into the future, because Robotnik now somehow has a way of controlling time, apparently. Big shocker, they get sent to the future where Iblis has destroyed everything. So they see where Silver comes from, and why he wants to kill Sonic so bad, I guess. Shadow and Rouge were, were also sent here, which it actually does make sense, because you actually get to see that in Shadow's storyline. So the game does do a pretty good job of tying this, all three of the storylines together. I'll give it that. They do a good job there. But that's pretty much the only thing good that I'll say about this game's stupid-ass story. I know I'm done talking about the gameplay, but this is, without a doubt, the worst fucking Sonic running stage in the entire fucking game. I despise this fucking level. Then you have to fight Iblis, which I fucked up and I guess I didn't record it. You didn't miss much. Basically, he's this big lava snake or a big flaming dong. Whatever you want to call him. Who gives a shit? Sonic and Shadow are able to get the two Chaos Emeralds that allows them to use Chaos Control and send them back to their regular time. What do you got to do next? Of course, Sonic wants to go save the princess because he can only think with his meaty bits. Oh, I hate this fucking level. You gotta stop the train before it blows up. Fuck it. One more god-awful running mission later. 
Sonic saves the princess, but then Silver shows up again. And then this causes the princess to get captured again. But then Shadow shows up and he's like, Sonic, I'm so edgy. I'm going to beat the shit out of this loser. You go on ahead and save the princess for the fifth fucking time. Then one of the dumbest yet funniest cutscenes in the entire game happens where Robotnik has her literally in his in his grasp and he just he just casually lets her fuck off and jump off his little ship thing. It's asinine. He even taunts her. He says, what are you going to do, jump? And she's like, yep, yeah, I'm going to jump, jump, fuck it. Look at that. And then he catches her. This is fucking horrible. Then Robotnik does the smartest thing he could fucking possibly do and says that he's going to destroy the entire city if she doesn't turn herself in. <laughs> That's pretty fucking brutal, but it's also pretty goddamn clever. I gotta give Robotnik some credit there. Of course she turns herself in and once again gets captured. How many goddamn times is this princess going to be captured in one fucking game? At this point, you have to go do some stupid-ass trials. The game totally forgets that it's actually just a fucking Sonic game, and it's, it's mostly, you know, supposed to be a goddamn platformer, not these stupid-ass tests of intelligence. And the test of intelligence, literally all you have to do hey. is just jump through the right warp gates. It, it's mostly just luck based. There's no intelligence about it. The next trial is the trial of courage. Basically, you gotta kill a bunch of enemies while having no rings, which is a real pain in the ass because if you die once, you have to set through this loading screen that, of course, has to take as long as humanly fucking possible. I'm trying to talk as much as possible so I can cover the whole damn thing. Talk to the asshole who runs the trials. Set through another goddamn loading screen that I'm going to have to sit here and try to talk all the way through just to get to the fucking end of it so you can regain control. Have to talk to the son of a bitch again. Set through another goddamn loading screen again just so you can do the fucking trial. Get hit once. Die. Do the whole fucking thing over until you finally beat the damn thing. The final trial is the test of love. Oh boy. I can't wait for this cringe fest. Well, it's a choice. You either choose Amy, who's a cartoon hedgehog, or Princess Elise, who is a human. Now, you are a blue cartoon hedgehog, so obviously I chose Amy. Hey. I don't know why I'm even attempting to make sense of this dog shit. Silver shows up and decides to help Sonic fight Eggman's army because now he knows that Sonic isn't actually the Iblis Trigger. The stage has pretty much the only good running section in the entire game. So a, a gold star for that, I guess. There's your big fuck off thumbs up for me. Still sucks ass. Well, it turns out that Eggman's ship is a pile of shit. And the whole thing's about to crash. So Eggman and the princess, no joke, they both fucking die. Police! <laughs> well, of course, Sonic and Silver use chaos control to go back in time before the princess is, you know, killed in a fucking explosion. So Sonic's final level is the aquatic base. And he's gotta go stop Eggman before the egg carrier launches. Oh, so epic. And the final boss for Sonic's storyline is Eggman in his Egg Wyvern. Oh, shit. It's super fucking easy. So Sonic beats Eggman, and he once again 
saves the princess and they escape in an epic cutscene. Aren't you worried? If you have time to worry, then none, right? <laughs> Oh, that's so badass. Oh, this game is so cool. Yeah, go get him, Sanic. Oh, they're dead. Well, that's the end of Oh, bullshit. What a load of fucking bullshit. You couldn't... You, you can't just be lucky enough, I guess. Oh, no, she's dead. Nope, never mind. She's still fucking alive, too. God damn it. Well, with more sexual tension between a fucking animal and a human being, I'm, I've am i never been closer to wishing death upon myself. And that's the end of Sonic's shitty fucking storyline. Thank God. Nice smile. Oh. My God. But of course, my suffering must continue, and now I have to play as Silver the Hedgehog. In Silver's story, he starts out in the future where everything's fucked up, and he meets this weird hedgehog who looks a lot like Shadow, except you can actually tell that this guy's fucking evil. I don't know, some, some hedgehog named Mephilus or something like that? I don't know, he's evil, that's all you need to know. But of course he tricks Silver into believing that the Iblis Trigger is actually Sonic the Hedgehog, of course. So that's how... So you figure out how Silver comes back to Sonic's timeline and why he wants to kill Sonic at the beginning. But you obviously already know that this dude's lying to Silver because you figure out that Silver knows that... He knows that Sonic's not the Iblis Trigger anymore, so this guy's evil. So why even attempt to to paint this guy like, oh, we're going to get one over on you big time. You're not going to see this guy coming. He's a bad guy, and you won't know it. No, I know it instantly. He just looks evil, and he acts evil. God damn it. So Silver's in the Sonic timeline. And I wasn't expecting him to have to go through the same bullshit that Sonic did and have to run around this stupid goddamn world, talk to freaky looking people, and try to get to the next area of the fucking game. But no, of course you have to do that because this game sucks ass. Silver spends a good chunk of his story, you know, looking for the Ibbles Trigger, which he believes is Sonic, but after the part where he beats up Sonic and the princess gets away and then Amy stops Silver from killing Sonic. He starts to contemplate, hey, maybe this guy's not the, the bad guy. That's what we call character development. And somehow this game actually fucking managed to have it. I was... I, I, another big fuck off thumbs up for me. Good good job, game. You, you did a good. So apparently Amy snuck into one of Eggman's secret bases that he was keeping the princess. I don't know how she didn't get fucking seen at all. I mean, Jesus Christ, she's a fucking pink goddamn anthropomorphic hedgehog. But no, she can just slip through the fucking, the whole place. She ends up saving the princess, I guess. I guess that's how the, the princess escaped the first time. But all that means is that we get more horrendous fucking dialogue. And this is some of the worst there is. So Elise tells Amy that she was waiting for someone to save her. And Amy, Amy like, asks her, oh, is, it a, is it a guy? Are, were, are you in love with him? And Elise is, like, all flustered and shit. Like, are you fucking serious? So, yeah, she's definitely in love with Sanic, the hedgehog. She's wanting to get some of that blue dong. So, anyways, Silver and Blaze are, are talking to Mephilus, and they're asking him about the Iblis Trigger and why he wants to destroy the world. Mephilus is like, 
I don't give a shit about your character development. Just go kill Sonic the Hedgehog already. And Silver, Silver's conflicted, but he's like, yeah, okay, fine, yeah. But then after that whole part with the where Silver confronts Sonic at the train yard and Shadow shows up and beats the shit out of Silver, Shadow says that he's going to help Silver figure out who Mephilus is and, and how to stop the, the Iblis trigger or whatever. Then they both use like some kind of chaos control and, and they see... They, they go back in time to when Iblis was first created in the lab and they find that Elise's father had something to do with creating Solaris or sealing away Solaris. I don't know. I, d I didn't really pay attention to this fucking part. I was I was kind of out of it. But anyways, they 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 then decide to go their separate ways, and Silver's gonna go stop Iblis, and Shadow's gonna go stop Mephilus. Are you confused yet? Good. Let's continue. So apparently, Silver and Shadow have to use some kind of fucking little staff thing to seal away Mephilus. I don't really understand its relevance to the plot, whatever. Now, I honestly don't understand what the main point of Shadow and Silver going back in time to make sure that the Iblis was sealed away properly and Mephilus gets sealed away in the Dark Scepter or whatever the fuck it's called. Other than to just give Silver some clarity. I mean, I guess... I guess with time travel logic, they were the ones who originally sealed them. I fucking hate this time travel bullshit in, in video games and movies and shit. Why, why does bullshit like that have to be so goddamn confusing? Stop with the time travel shit. God damn it. At this point, Silver says, fuck it. We don't need to change the goddamn past. We can go back to the future and just seal the big flaming fuck away ourselves. Well... Of course, you gotta fight Iblis, who has evolved from being this big burning cock to a giant fucking kaiju monster. After beating the big burning bastard, Silver tries to seal Iblis away, but he's unable to because I guess he can't take the fire or something. So Blaze ends up taking the fucking Chaos Emeralds and doing it herself. I guess she can handle the fire because her name's Blaze. I don't fucking know. But apparently, this fucking kills her. So, you have these two new characters that you add to the game and you kill one off. And this character doesn't come back. Even though, even though spoiler alert, they changed the, the future, so therefore Silver's future isn't destroyed anymore later on. But you never see Blaze again after this. Like, th she does not show up in, like, the final chapter where everybody shows up together and shit. She doesn't show up at all, so this this is it. So why even add this fucking character? Basically, all this character is here for is to just die so Iblis can be sealed away. What a brilliant character arc. I do enjoy Silver's reaction to this, though. Like, he's visibly mad. And he's obviously upset. I mean, at least he's not like fucking Simone from Gurren Lagann, where he's just like, Yeah, okay. Oh, well. Who cares? So now we have to do Shadow's storyline. Woo. And by now, we pretty much already know everything that happens. I mean, we don't know a few things about Mephilus, but... We, we learn all that shit. Basically, Shadow ends up accidentally releasing Mephilus when he finds the Dark Scepter, and Mephilus sends Shadow and Rouge into the future. And that's where they meet up with Sonic and the gang. Whatever, who cares? Now, while they were in the future, they ended up finding Omega, who was, like, on standby mode. That's important, so remember that. So, Rouge ends up going back to the future along with Sonic Team, but Shadow ends up getting separated, and he, I guess he's still trapped in the future. So, Rouge has to go find Omega in the, the past, 
so she can give the Chaos Emerald to Omega, and then the Omega in the future will know his objective is to go find Shadow in the future and give the Chaos Emerald to him. Fuck! So in the future, Mephilus shows up, fights Shadow for a little bit. Omega shows up, helps Shadow beat the fuck out of Mephilus. They beat Mephilus. Omega gives the fucking Chaos Emerald to Shadow, and he uses Chaos Control to go back into the fucking past or whatever. I gotta say, I think Shadow might be my favorite character in this game. Mainly because in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, he was kind of a, an asshole, like he was kind of just a loner. But in this game, he's... In this, he he agrees to let people help him. He agrees to help other people. But, he, I mean, he, he does keep that whole emo punk attitude that is iconic. That's what we call a character arc. They actually managed to do some character development. Another big fuck-off thumbs-up for me, game. Good work. So we get Shadow's perspective from when him and Silver went back in the past, and this time he seals away Mephilus. We already knew this. So apparently Shadow knows how to stop Mephilus now. He's got to, I don't know, make a new Scepter of Darkness or some bullshit. I don't know if that's right or not. Probably not. Who gives a fuck? But Omega shoots the fuck out of him. Has no effect. So Mephilus fucks off after Shadow and Rouge show up. And again, I'm giving this game a lot of credit here. This whole line of dialogue is actually really fucking good. So in the future, Shadow ends up being sealed away because everybody blamed him for the whole Flames of Disaster or whatever. Because, obviously, Shadow's, like, super powerful with his whole chaos control and all that shit. So they seen him as a threat, and they sealed him away. And Rouge doesn't like that, because she thinks it's a bunch of bullshit. And Shadow's blaming himself, of course. Shadow? Even if you believe everyone in the world will be against you, know that I'll always remain by your side. Remember that. I will. Gold Star. Well, they end up going to confront Mephilus. They kick his ass, but he somehow gets some of the Chaos Emeralds or something. But Shadow, like, takes off his fucking rings, which somehow make him, like... Super fucking powerful somehow. This is like the first I've ever heard of that, but whatever. Anyways, this is the end of Shadow's storyline after Mephilus makes a shitload of clones. Shadow just like fucks them all off. And that's that's the fucking end of this shit. Why why did that end on a cliffhanger and the other stories were more conclusive? I don't fucking know. I don't really care either. Because now it's time for the last chapter. Oh, sorry. Last episode. Whatever. Fuck you. Now before I continue with the final chapter of the game, I just want to say I have so many words that I could use to describe what I feel about this story, but I think I'm just going to sum it up into three simple words. Bullshit. Bullshit. Derivative. I hope you're ready for this because this final chapter is the most insane thing that has ever happened in a Sonic game. And I mean that. Oh, God, here we go. All right, so apparently Mephilus wasn't destroyed by Shadow, he escaped. And. I guess he has all the Chaos Emeralds, apparently. So he comes out of nowhere behind Sonic. And he fucking murders him. So he kills Sonic. Ah. I mean, damn, he just kind of special beam cannoned his ass. Yeah. So Elise cries for her hedgehog lover. 
And I guess that apparently breaks the seal on Iblis. I don't know what the hell her father was thinking, making the seal so fragile that all it takes is her no. to fucking cry no. to break the goddamn seal. What was he fucking thinking? So all along, Mephiles' plan was to kill Sonic in front of the princess to get her to cry so he could fuse with Iblis. Okay, sure, whatever. I, at this point, why even, why even just try to make fucking sense of it? There is no fucking sense here. All common sense is just thrown out the fucking window. Fuck it. So he, I guess they fuse and they form into Solaris, which ends the fucking world. And that's the end of the game. The world's over. End of story. That's it. I'm done talking about it. We're done here, boys and girls. No need to fucking play the game. You've seen it here. No, of course not. The game continues, even though everything should be fucking gone. Apparently, it killed everybody and destroyed everything except the main characters. Sure, why not? It's also miraculous that it just apparently teleported everybody to the same exact location. Didn't harm a single one of them. Everybody's here, even fucking Robotnik, who was a bad guy up until this point. And all of a sudden, Robotnik knows exactly what the fuck happened. He talks about some spatial distortion bullshit caused by Solaris fusing with Mephiles and the Chaos Emeralds had something to do with it, and then they dispersed after Mephiles fused with them, and th then the fucking Chaos Emeralds scattered to across the fucking spatial distortion, and spatial distortion, and then more spatial distortion. God damn it, I hate this. Also, Sonic's still fucking dead. Then the game pulls a real big Dragon Ball Z moment. And they all have figure out that they have to travel across what's left of time and space and all that to find the Chaos Emeralds. There's seven of them, by the way. Seven Dragon Balls. Wow, that's creative. So they got to find all seven of them. They all have to split up, go find all of them. Then bring them back and bring Sonic back to life with them, I guess. Because I, I guess now the Chaos Emeralds can do every fucking thing imaginable. They can fuse some asshole with the fucking demon thing to make a god... They can bring people back from the fucking dead, and I guess they can they can turn Sonic supersonic, but that does that's that's like who cares about that? So the final level, it's literally called the end of the world, and I have to say this fucking level is without a doubt the best level in the fucking game. It is honestly a very fun challenge. So what you have here is you play as you start out as Tails. And you have to fly through basically a world that you've already been through previously in the game. It's just being fuck, fucked up by like these space-time distortions and shit. And if you touch them, you die instantly. The, the blue orbs, anyways. Of course, the game doesn't tell you that. So you think, hey, I gotta touch this to be teleported somewhere. No, if you touch it, you die instantly. It doesn't matter if you have rings or not. You touch it and you die. And the longer you spend in the level, the more of these orbs will show up, and if you're anywhere around the orbs, they will pull you towards them. So it gets really hard to dodge them. But they have these little rocks that if you get near, it resets the whole space-time continuum or what the fuck ever, and the orbs will disappear, but obviously if you leave the rock, then the orbs will start to come out again. I don't know if this makes any fucking sense or not, but, that, I mean, either way, it's a pretty cool level, actually. I, I actually really like what they did here. It's too bad they couldn't have been this creative with the rest of the fucking game. Instead, it's just terrible platforming, awful controls. I mean, that's not to say the controls aren't fucking horrible here, but it did take me a very long time to figure out just what the fuck I needed to do. Basically, you have to run through with every character to the end of whatever stage they're on and reach the Chaos Emerald at the end. Once you do that, fucking hell. Once you do that, you go to the next area of the stage and you play as a different character in a different area. So Tails, he takes the, the whole destroyed future or whatever. 
Omega goes and finds the one in the volcano. Knuckles looks for the Chaos Emerald at the swamp. Silver goes to the desert, and this is definitely the fucking part that I had the hardest time with. There are just these, these stupid space-time orbs fucking everywhere in the desert. Fucking hated it. Rouge looks for the Chaos Emerald on the beach, and without a doubt, hers is the easiest one to fucking find. It literally took me about 20 seconds to find the damn thing. All you have to do is just immediately jump to the fucking pillars, climb to the very top, fly to the next highest pillar, climb to the top, and fly right towards the beach, and there it is. Easy as shit. Then you got Amy, who I think has it the absolute worst out of everybody. So, now on this stage, for some reason, all the fucking space-time orbs or whatever, not only do they try to suck and fuck you, they throw crates at you non-stop, and if they hit you, of course it hurts you and knocks your fucking rings away. Oh my god, why does Amy have it the fucking worst? She's the fucking worst to play as! I'm exaggerating. Actually, Amy's part is really fucking easy. It's not too long, and you can kind of just breeze through it as long as you don't get fucking hit by the goddamn crates that get thrown at you too many times. Last up is Shadow, who... Pretty much has it just about as normal as you'd expect. It's kind of just a platformer with the added little hindrance of not being able to touch these fucking orbs that appear randomly. Uh, it's kind of just the typical difficulty with this game's janky, shitty controls. It's moderately difficult. So after everybody gets all the Dragon Balls, it's time for the what I think is probably one of the worst scenes in a video game ever. Return the favor. I care not what happens to me. But please heed my voice. Sonic, She's not come back to me. No. To us. Don't do it. No. Oh my god. And that causes the motherfucker to not only resurrect, but go Super Saiyan? What the shit? What the fuck am I fucking playing right now? Now, it seems like ever since Sonic and Knuckles did the whole thing where you do the final level in Super Saiyan, or Super Sonic, sorry. If you got all the Chaos Emeralds anyways. It seems like most of the 3D games kind of just go with that trope. And I fucking en enjoy the shit out of that. I think it's fucking awesome. I mean, motherfucking Sonic Adventure 2 Battle did it, and there it was fucking perfection. This game does it too, and it's actually the best fucking part in the game. Now, not only does Sonic get Super Saiyan power, but Silver and Shadow both get it as well. So you have to fight the final boss fight as all three of them. And that is fucking awesome, actually. So the final boss fight against Solaris. Ooh. So you, you get a switch control at will between Super Sonic and Super Shadow and Super Silver. Jeez. Honestly, I don't know what the fuck the gimmick of this fight is. At first, I didn't know how the fuck to hurt him. Seemed like I couldn't really do shit as Sonic, but when I turned to Silver, it seemed like Silver was able to just chew off chunks of his health because Silver can use his telepathy to basically stop all of his fucking rocks that he throws at you. And you can just chuck them back at him. It's kind of cool because Shadow has the ability to basically shoot out, like, I don't even know, like, I guess key blasts. Sure, why not? 
all Sonic can really do is like just do a big old charge at him. Of course, I didn't figure out until the second phase of the fucking boss fight that you have to charge up your goddamn power to do any fucking thing with Sonic, so that was pretty stupid of me. Of course, the game doesn't fucking tell you that. This part took me 12 minutes alone. I wish I was joking. But I actually did enjoy it quite a bit, even though it took fucking forever. Now, the second phase of the boss fight is fucking ridiculous. This guy just goes ape shit. He just constantly throws rocks and shoots a shitload of beams at you. Basically, Silver is absolutely fucking useless for this whole boss fight because you can't stay still long enough to snatch up all of his rocks and throw them back at him because then more of his rocks will just hit the rocks that you throw back at him and then he'll just shoot your ass with the beams. So basically, just switch to Silver whenever you need to build up more rings with the other two. Basically, just use him as fodder to, to just switch back to Sonic and just rush the shit out of him, deal some damage, switch to Shadow, shoot him with some Kai Blasts, switch to Silver when you need rings with the other two, and just have Silver fuck around for like five minutes, and then fucking switch back to the other two, and finally you'll be able to fucking kill him eventually. I love this fucking final boss fight, though. It is actually really goddamn good. The music is fucking amazing. The boss fight itself is pretty goddamn challenging. It's fair, but challenging. At least it's no platforming bullshit where you can fall off the edge when it wasn't your fault and the game just fucks you over completely. No, it's actually a fair goddamn fight. And you get to use your fucking super forms, which is always great. I love it. I actually really enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't fucking hold a candle to Sonic Adventure 2 Battle's final fight. Oh, fuck no. But it does do a pretty good job of coming close to it. Honestly, I think it's, it's right up there with it. It does its own thing, just like Sonic Adventure 2 Battle did. You got your super forms and all that shit. And you got the badass music. I mean, the music doesn't even come close to live and learn. Fuck no. I mean, here, just listen to this. Listen to these two pieces of music, and you tell me which you would rather rock out to. Well, honestly, I like both. And you know what? This game finally gets a legitimate big thumbs up for me. You did a great final boss fight. Awesome job. Now, how do you end this fucking game? Well, it seems like it's building up to be a, a pretty decent way to end the damn game. They just beat Solaris. Woo! Everybody's celebrating. We get to see what happens to everybody at the end of it. and But no, of course not. That would be way too good. No, this game has to have another cringy fucking scene between Sonic and the goddamn princess. It, they couldn't... Look at this. Why couldn't it, it, it just end there? Just fucking end it right there. It would have been better than what we actually fucking got. So, just for, you might as well just forget every other character that you just seen, aside from Princess Elise and Sonic, because for the rest of the game, you don't fucking see what happened to any of them. Instead, we just get this scene between Sonic and Elise, and, I don't know, uh, apparently, they, they go to Solaris, like the real Solaris or something. I don't know. More Final Fantasy bullshit. They see, like, the, the flame that Solaris originally was. I really, really don't know what to tell you, people. Basically, if they put out the flame, Solaris will never have existed at all. The world would go back to normal, and time would have went back to before Sonic and Elise met. 
So it's almost like this whole fucking game wouldn't have even happened. So Elise doesn't want to do it because I guess she fucking loves Sonic. Jesus Christ. But Sonic tells her to fucking do it anyways because love between a human and an animal is just fucking wrong. And the game just starts right back from the first cutscene. Except this time, Elise and Sonic don't meet and Robotnik doesn't show up. And that's the end of the game. That's the end of the game. You don't get to see what happened to Silver. You don't see what happened to Shadow. Or Amy. Or Knuckles. Or Rouge. Or Omega. Or Tails. Or anybody else. What happened to, to Silver's future? Did he is his future good again? Is Blaze still fucking dead? Who fucking knows? Honestly, who gives a shit? Because this is what you got. You get Sonic going to look at the princess from afar because he knows that he can't be together with her or something. I don't know. That's probably not what he thinks, but that's what I think. Excuse me if I find a fucking cartoon hedgehog and a f fucking human being their relationship to be a little bit fucking off-putting. Excuse me. I feel like this ending could have been a, a really nice, bittersweet kind of ending in some kind of other JRPG, like something really good. Not a fucking Sonic game. God damn it. Why is this in a fucking Sonic game? I can't get over that. I can't get over how just how strange this is. Uh, and you know what? I know I've been ripping ass on this game, but I have to say I did not fucking hate this game. I legitimately thought I was going to fucking despise it. There were times where the game pissed me off to no end, but after I'm after I just went through all this editing and I reviewed all the footage and I just reminisced on all the goddamn bullshit that I went through and this game's stupid ass story, all the nonsensical dialogue, all the bullshit like that. It's a game that's just so cheesy, so stupid, ignorant, all these kind of bad words for it. It's so bad that it's good. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay is fucking horrendous. If the gameplay had been really good, I would say this would be a pretty damn good Sonic game. If you can look past the cheesy ass story. But I surprisingly did enjoy it. And you know what? I feel no shame in saying that. I enjoyed Sonic 06, okay? Fuck you. I liked Sonic 06. I'll never play it again, but I still actually enjoyed it. I will only look back on this moment and think of only fond memories of how bad the controls were and how stupid the story was. And I will think, you know what? That wasn't a bad fucking game. Because at the end of the day, if the game that you played didn't feel like a waste of time to you, then it was a good game. It's okay to like shitty games. I like plenty of them. And this is just another one that I really liked. And that's okay. <laughs>